Bienvenido una vez más a Al Oscuro with Negro, The Tape. And today I have someone who I just found out what his real name is, Alexander <laughs> Bolivar. Something that I did not know, but I did find out. Um, who was also known as DJ Alex Poderoso. And I, you know, I, I've always known him as DJ LP. DJ LP, what's up, my brother? How you doing? My brother, I'm doing well, man. Like, we already won today waking up this morning, bro. So just, just thankful to be on this earth another day, man. So how, how, do you, how do you wake up and have this, like, positive energy of, like, you know, like, thankful every day? I mean, like, you know, uh, I don't mean to throw religion at anybody's face at all. That's not my intention. But, like, first thing I do, man, like, I, I just thank God, bro. Like, I wake up. I don't, I don't play no music or nothing like that, man. As soon as I get up and I get in the shower and, you know, like, and I, and I get in the car, like, I, I just have my conversations with God and my daily prayers. And like what I'm thankful for already, man. And, and every single day is like, it's just been, you know, um, like the common thing that I've been saying, you know, within my prayers is just how thankful I am to just wake up and be healthy and to just get, get to work safely and be able to come home safely every day. So I feel like that's something that like is so overlooked, you know, just being healthy, especially in this day and age, man. And so, you know, just being able to do something that, you know, where I can be able to help people out and bring joy to people and just living, living my purpose of making other people feel better about themselves, man. Like, Shit, man. There's worse things going on in the world, right? For sure. So, you know, talking about purpose and whatnot, you know, I think um, one of the things that help us uh, find our purpose is it's really our journey, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, where did you grow up? Um, where were you? What, first, where were you born? Where, were you gr where did you grow up? Um, and how was that childhood experience? Uh, Patterson, New Jersey. Born and raised, man. Pizza. <laughs> forever, my, forever my hometown, you know? Um, yeah, man, uh, my family, you know, came from Colombia. I was first generation born and raised here in the States, in Patterson to be exact. Um, yeah, man, my family just needed to like leave the whole Pablo Escobar era, um, back in Medellin, the whole Colombian cartel situation, man. It, it, like, it was just bad times in Colombia. And so like my family just wanted a better opportunity for their kids, AKA me and my siblings. Um, so yeah, man, I, I, I was born and, um, music has always been so like ingrained in me since I was a little kid. Like my, my dad would just always blast salsa, you know, in the speakers or cumbia or adenatos. Uh, my uncle, I remember, he was really into like the dance music and the pop music. So he was in the, the one that exposed me to that. My older brother was always so much into like uh, hip hop of the 90s and early 2000s. So he exposed me to that. So like I was just always a sponge, man. Like, you know, every time I was around my family um, and then with my friends too, man, like it, it just felt like like growing up, growing up in the hood, man, like Patterson, there's a lot of Colombians, Peruvians, Dominicans, uh, there's a lot of black people, there's a lot of uh, Muslims. So like just being able to learn from different cultures, I thought was so, so cool. Um, especially like just knowing that like, all right, we, at the, we all at the bottom, this is really what culture is right here. This is what, what we embody as, as our own culture. Um, yeah, man, it, it, it was a blessing, bro. Because um, like looking back at it, I see people that you come up with, you know, and you see them doing the same thing. And you, you see people, you know, allow themselves to become a product of their own environment. Um, when, in fact, you can actually step out of that pattern of that small mentality uh, frame, you know. Um, and just being able to just, like, use your journey from where you came from as motivation to want more. And so, like, I'm just thinking. What would you that. say was your most powerful experience in Patterson? That's a good, that's a real good question, man. There's a few of them. Um, the one that, that definitely made the most impact on me. Um, I was, I was 17, 18 years old. And uh, I remember I was selling a little weed too at the time. Like, you know, I was <laughs> just out of high school and, shit. and like, I knew I, I knew I wasn't trying to stay in college, man. I was studying to be a high school English teacher. No offense to any of the teachers, but that just wasn't my, like my passion and my lane, you know? Um, Actually, I went to school for I, I went to school to be a math teacher. That's right. I remember that you like a sub for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, um, and yeah, man. So like, um, I just wasn't like there were certain people that I was hanging around with that I just shouldn't have been hanging around with. That I just knew just weren't part of my vibe and like just weren't part of my energy. But I still hung around with them, and I remember like just one time, um, uh, because of a, a a childhood trauma, like I, I never like guns. Like I hate guns. I don't want to see a gun. I don't want to touch a gun. Like this is not for me, you know. Um, and I remember one of the guys that was saying shotgun. It was four of us in the car. He whipped out a gun, um, and I got shook. You know, I got shook as hell. And I'm like, yo, like you know, 
I was getting like an anxiety attack and I told him, yo, just let me out the car. I want to be out. And you know, like how guys talk, especially like at that age, oh, stop being a little bitch, stop being a little pussy, you know, like this and that. And um, next red light, I just took myself out of the car um, and I just walked home. And I remember that like later that day, I got a phone call um, and I found out that they got pulled over um, and they found that unregistered weapon in the car and they all got hit for it, you know? And so it made, it, it made me think right away, had I stayed in that car, I would have gotten hit for that um, possession of an, of an unregistered weapon too, even though I didn't really technically have possession of it. Exactly. The state of New Jersey, if it's in a car, you know, like if it's in a car and it's unregistered, it's on everybody that's in a car. Um, and, and yeah, man, that just put things in, in perspective for me and it just woke me up and it was like, I right, I need to do something with my life. I'm saying I want to do this radio thing. I'm already a DJ at you know, certain clubs and whatnot, but I really got to like figure this shit out because I... <laughs> I don't want to end up like one of those guys. Right? So, you know, I think a lot of these life experience, right, um, bring us to points where we need to make uh, sometimes these uh, drastic decisions for our, um, for our careers or our lifestyle and whatnot, right? Um, yeah. When did you, before we go into all this radio stuff, right, when did you start DJing and why did you start DJing? 12 years old, I started working at my dad's. 12? Yeah, yeah, 12 years old. Why yeah. are you DJing at 12? So like, all right. So my parents divorced when I was 12. Actually, 13, excuse me. All right, so I started DJing when I was 13. Uh, my parents divorced when I was 12. Um, and I remember just one day I was with my dad um, in his apartment. <laughs> he was lit as hell, man. I'll never forget this day. And we were listening to Alex Sensation. I didn't know who Alex Sensation was. Um, but we were listening to a Salsa mix. Um, and it just went from one transition of one song that I liked into another. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. You know, and I'm like, what was that? That was awesome. And then it, and then he transitioned it into another song. And I thought it was so dope. And then to another song. And I asked my dad, I'm like, wow, like, what is this? Like, this is so cool. And then I start I, I, I start hearing um Alex talking to now Yehita. And like and, and this lady is saying, Oh my god, Alex, you know, it's because of you that I'm having such a good time. Excuse me. Um I was having such a bad day at work, you know, but it's because of your energy, your music, your vibe that is just you know, it just turns my day around every single day. Thank you. And the way that he responded to was like, it just felt so genuine. It felt like I knew him. I felt like there was a certain connection from me as a listener to him as, you know, uh, the provider of the, of the vibes, the vibe um, providers, I like to call it. Um, and so it hit me like an epiphany, man. I just knew right away in that moment, I'm like, I just looked at my dad, I'm like, wow, I think I want to be a DJ on the radio. And he was like, okay, cool. <laughs> my dad was listening. This is what he told me at, at 12 years old. He's like, all right, Bobby. Um, yeah, DJs, they make a lot of money. They get a lot of girls, too. I think you should, I think you should be a DJ. <laughs> and, like, I don't think a dad should be saying that to a 12-year-old. You know, like, yeah, they get mad girls. And I remember I went home and I told my mom, like, mom, like, like, I said I should be a DJ, you know? Like, DJ, why? Like, oh, because we make a lot of money and we can get a lot of girls, too. She like, get that shit out of your head. You ain't gonna be no DJ. And, um, but like right away, like in, within the next month, um, I just started working at my dad's restaurant as a coat check. Um, and I was just saving money, man. And, and I bought my first equipment. Um, by the time I turned 13 and remember I connected everything, bro. As soon as everything was connected, I'm in my tank top and my boxers. I remember I had my cookies and my milk on the side. I don't know how I remember that, but I just do. And I just looked at the at the equipment. I just took a deep breath. I'm like, what the fuck do I do now? I don't know what buttons to press. I don't know what to do. Like, I I bought it now. I just don't know what to do. Um, so it was just, you know, trial and error and see how it goes. Started doing live streams uh, straight from the crib Wednesday nights. And then, you know, went to an internet radio station called Club Zone. Where, like, they gave me, like, my own slot and, you know. So, just, you know, that's 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 my next question, right? Um, So, you know, You've been part of a lot of the parties that I've had, um, whether it was the Classical Thursdays, the Classical oh, Fridays, forgot uh, about Cow <laughs> Lounge. Um, a, oh. uh, I don't even know where else. Um, but we did a lot of parties together, right? Um, oh, but I never knew that you had the Crazy Talk Radio at Club Zone FM with Javi. Crazy and I think that, that, this is probably one of the most surprising parts in this. Like, you, were, you had a show with Javi. Yeah. I feel like Javi doesn't even talk. So, like, <laughs> how, how was how was having a show with Javi? And so Javi, shouts to Javi Cartel, Jams by Graphic, uh, phenomenal uh, graphic designer. See, very yeah, good, very good. That's the guy that does my flyers. Like that's my right. guy. 
incredible, incredible. Like, not only is he incredible what he does, man, but he's just an incredible human being, period, man. That's my brother. Like, he's a, he's a big part of my journey, man. Um, yeah, like, Javi, like, we, we had, like, he was, like, not, not even just he was, even though we don't talk every day, like, that's my brother no matter what, forever, man. Um, we've been through some shit together. And, like, and he was always so open with me, just as I was always so open with him. And so, like, what I think, um, you know, what men don't speak of enough is that it's okay to be vulnerable amongst each other, you know, as men. We don't got to act like all oh, this machismo. No, we got to stay tough no matter what. Like, it's okay to feel, you know. It's okay to be upset around another man um, and express how you feel. Um, and so I feel like with Javi, um, like, I was, I was comfortable enough to be able to, like, share, like, my experiences with him. And, and, and so was he with me. And so, like, that comfortability just transitioned, you know, translated itself into, like, um, having a radio show, you know? Like, and I, I needed to step forward and, and, and gaining experience so that I could be on the radio, so I could be the next Alex, you know, as, as, I, as I used to think that I wanted to be. Um, and, yeah, so Crazy Talk Radio just happened, man. I'm like, yo, like, let's do this. You know, why not? He's like, me? Nah. Man. I'm like, nah, come on. I need you, man. I need you. Let's do this. And so and we rocked out with it for a minute, man. So that's my brother Hobby right there. Yeah, we um, so, and as as we keep on going this, and I knew this one uh, for sure. Um, I think I'm, you know your path and my path. We had a lot of uh, common strings in between, maybe because we were both from Jersey. Um, but uh, you um, interned with someone who I mentored for, um, AJ El Callejero. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, how was how was first of all before anything? What do you think the responsibility of an intern is? All right, the responsibility of an intern. So number one, you're an intern, which means that you, nobody owes you shit. <laughs> nobody <laughs> owes you anything. Hold on, hold on, tell me, tell me. Can you say that one more time? I think my earphones are messing up. What gonna, happened? If you're gonna be an intern anywhere, a successful intern, you gotta learn quickly that nobody owes you shit. You're the one that gotta earn your stripes. You're the one that gotta go above and beyond so that you can even make yourself, you can take yourself to the next level. You know. And so, like, I remember the way that I asked AJ to be my intern. Uh, you've like we, I think we've seen each other one time at 466. Like you've been a yeah, no, I, was it 466 or was it um or was it or was it stage 48? I think it was stage 48. Uh, uh stage 48, we saw each other. Yeah, uh-huh. stage 48. I think so it was like, stage 48. 466. I was DJing there for um, for a while with Mike Tiggs. That's the Tiggs on that one. Um, I remember AJ was um he was hosting that night. Jumping Jay was supposed to be DJing, but he didn't show up for whatever reason it was. And so I was opening, so I ended up DJing the whole night. So I'm rocking full crowd, and then he AJ's on the mic, and he's looking at me. He's like, "Little motherfucker!" Like he 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 just curses at me with the shades on. He's like, "No motherfucker, you rocking right now, man!" Like with the shades on. He was legendary with those shades. Was, you, know, <laughs> you know when AJ gets his shades on, man, in the club, you know, like hey, that's that's another AJ, you know. But um, yeah, man, and he asked me, he's like, "Yo, how old are you?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm 19, man." He's like, "You're not even supposed to be here." I'm like, "I know." And so I took that moment of of finally having a conversation with him to my advantage i'm like all right there's an there's an opening for me to just say something for an opportunity worst thing he could say is no i told him straight up i'm like yo listen i know you don't know me from a hole in the wall but like my dream is to take your job like respectfully speaking i just want to learn as much as i can under you like i'm down to be your bitch straight i told him just like that i am down to be your bitch i don't care if that means getting you food if that means um um getting you drinks, if I got to get you girls, if I got to get you a number, if I got to get you and kind of connect, run through Times Square butt naked with your logo on my chest, I'm with it, I'm about it, you know? Like, I just want my foot in the door, I just want to learn, you know? I have a question. Yeah. How important is it to not, um, even though you said be his bitch, right? How important is it for you to understand that for you, that's an investment into your career? And how can you make someone who doesn't comprehend that comprehend it? So for me, it was like, either this works or I'm fucked. Straight up. Because like, I didn't have no plan B, man. You know, like I was like, I went to school for like three semesters to be a teacher. I knew that wasn't my passion. Like I had always known that like I wanted to be on the radio, that I wanted to be a DJ on the radio. A damn good one too. Um, And I saw like, some sort of light with AJ where like, oh, that might be my way in, you know? Like, what can I do to, you know, to make this work to where like it benefits him and it benefits me. Um, and just being able to go above and beyond and always over delivering. That's one thing that AJ taught me. 
that anything that you're assigned to, anything that you have to do, always over deliver no matter what. And then yeah, eventually, well, deliver was definitely a common message that he always sent me to. You don't feel like anybody's watching. Excuse me. Somebody's always watching, you know? And AJ just gave me that opportunity. He just looked at me. He was like, yeah, I, I usually don't do this, but here's my number. Give me a call on Sunday. I called him a couple of days later. My first day with him was that Monday. And so there's a saying in Spanish, boca cerrado no come. You know, closed mouths don't get fed. Had I not spoken up, shit, I probably wouldn't even be here right now, you know? Um, and so especially with not having any kind of, like, degrees to fall back on or any kind of school experience to fall back on, like, you know, I I, I was working with a chip on my shoulder everywhere I went because everywhere I went, everybody had communications majors or degrees, bachelors, masters, and, you know, like, I'm just a kid, you know, kid from Patterson, New Jersey, just trying to out-hustle everybody, you know? And... So, like, I definitely understand when you say that, right? So, like, you know, I, 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 I did graduate. Um, I graduated with Spanish language studies, minors in mathematics and psychology, which sounds great. Um, but the reality of it, um, one, it doesn't have to do anything with what I want to do. Um, I've been able to be slick enough to word it so that it seems like it does. Um, yeah. But, you know, when, you know when, you're, when you're in a corporate setting and, you know, you got people walking out of Penn State with communications, you have people coming out of NYU with broadcasting, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit intimidating, right? Yeah. Cause you know, Absolutely. you're just, you're just someone who has some sort of talent and some sort of work ethic behind it. Right. Um, and I, and I definitely understand when you say that, that you have to sometimes work with that chip in the shoulder. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that I did take from AJ was, you know, to over de over deliver no matter what, yeah. you know, and I, um, but when it talks about over deliver, I want to bring this up because I know it's happened to me. Do how threatening is that to the people that you work with? You can't care about that, you know? You got to just focus on, on what you can do to the best of your ability, bro, because investing that kind of negative energy towards, oh, what if, or like, or um, these people don't like me because I'm working hard, like, that's energy that you're wasting, man. And all you can't control how others will feel, ever, you know? You can't control what others will do. What you can control are your actions and what you think and what you can do within your own right, you know? And so um, I'm thankful that I was able to learn that at a young age, um, especially through AJ's guidance too. Um, yeah, man, like it's just, it's just so important to just invest all of your energy within yourself first and foremost, because you can't invest your energy into somebody else if you're not going to get that, um, you know, in return. And if you're going to invest a sort of negative energy towards somebody, like, damn, like, like, you know, he, he, he wishes bad on me. Like, why, why does somebody feel that way towards me? Like, that kind of negative feeling is only going to drain me even more. It's not going to elevate me. It's not going to help me grow, you know? And so you can only handle what you can handle within your own right. Now, so, um, so you know, you ask AJ, you get this call on the Monday, yeah. and boom, you start interning at uh, 93.1 Amor. Amor. Um, how was that feeling of yeah. knowing that the tri-state area is listening to the music that you're putting on? I was, I was so nervous, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wasn't even the one on the radio, you know, it was AJ that was on, you know, I was just behind the scenes producing and interning and doing everything that he was asking me to do, man. It was, it was a lot of things he asked me to do. Um, and especially drive him around, um, which was always fun. Um, yeah, bro. It, it it was pretty surreal, especially it still is surreal to this day, man, like eight, nine years later. Um, but just in that moment, it's like, all right, cool, this is the beginning, you know? Like there's no looking back now. This is the beginning. I'm I don't know where this is gonna take me, but like I know I'm gonna bust my ass off and I'm gonna make it work, whether it be here or somewhere else. Um, that's exactly how I felt in that moment, man. It's like cool, brand new chapter in my my book. I'm the one with with the pen in my hand, you know. This is not this is unerasable. Like, there's no whiteout. Whatever happens, you know, Jay-Z once said a loss ain't a loss, it's a lesson. Appreciate the pain, it's a blessing. So we take the L's as lessons, man, and we keep on moving forward to be better. And, um, and yeah, and just take it from there. So I'm just thankful that, you know, my time with AJ, like, um, with him, and also, like, when I went over to, to 92.3 Amp Radio for a few years, like, there, there were just so many people I learned from along the way that, you know, that were just so essential to my journey. J. Cole once said there's beauty in the struggle. So, like, the... the most beautiful part is not the end result. It's really the journey, man. Like you were just saying earlier. Now, the you know, you, you talk about the switch over to um, 92.3, right? And I think 
um, being that uh, I worked at, uh, at, at Amor, right? I understand that that environment there is a, is, it's, it's a different environment, totally, actually totally different environment compared to 92.3, yeah. right? Um, what would you say were the differences and the pros and cons of both sides? Um, all right. So one is English, one is Spanish. Let's start with yeah, that. For sure. So that's off the bat, off the bat, <laughs> talking a different language. Um, so like, it, it's, it's a little difficult to kind of compare and contrast because um, when I was with AJ, he was doing nights at Amor. And so by the time we got to the station, which was like six or six 30, um, everybody else really in the building was already gone for the most part, you know? Um, so like, I didn't really run into many people unless they were doing overnights or they were on the other station. Uh, at Mega or whatever it may be. Um, I mean, I, I would say, like, there's just so many similarities more than anything. Like, really, really the biggest difference is just the language, man. Um, what I learned is that there's always going to be, be people that, that are going to hate. <laughs> no matter what language. <laughs> like, like, that's just uh, one of the biggest universal, uh, universal languages is hate, you know? And so, like, you see that in English and in Spanish. Um, but at the same time, like one thing that I realized is that when you're nice to people, man, and when you put out good energy, regardless of what language you speak, man, like that energy is going to come back to you, bro. You know, like it may not be, it, might, it may not come back from everybody, you know, but, you know, the right people will, will be put around you slowly but surely, man. Um, and like when it comes to the technicalities of it, man, this is just, there's just a lot of similarities, man. There's certain formulas that just works for radio, regardless of what language it is. Um, when I was at AM, bro, like I went from like doing nights, um, interning um, AJ on his night show to like, all right, now I'm working a whole bunch of events in the streets for AM. Uh, I'm on the morning show for AM. Uh, I'm doing the stunts for AM. So I was doing, I was doing a lot more hands-on stuff at AM. Uh, I was doing more. Now, production. can you talk to me about, well, um, cause you know, did you start from the jump on, 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 was it your boy, right? Your boy in the morning? Your boy in the morning. Yeah, no, I didn't start off the rip, nah. Exactly. So nah. can you talk to me like that process of you, you know, working these events to then yeah. doing these stunts for the morning show? Like, you know, what what was it about LP that they were like, you know what, we could put LP to be the street guy for the morning show? Bro, it's crazy, man, because I was like a year in, I want to say a year in of um uh, of being at the station, just on the street team. I was just on a promotions department. I was working events and I know I was killing in the streets, man. I know there was nobody that was like creating more awareness, nobody that was hustling more in the streets than I was on the street team, man. Me and, 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 and a couple few too, man, that, you know, that were rocking with me heavy. Um, I remember like, it's funny, um, AJ, let me go back to AJ real quick because this is going to come full circle. The first day that I interned for AJ, he told me this. He was like, if there's anything that you're ever going to learn from me, like for whatever time that you're going to hang out with me, um, is you got to treat the CEO the, the same way um, you, you treat the janitor. Or you treat the janitor the same way you treat the CEO. Yo, I feel like he has this shit written down, bro. Yo, he's a beast with it. He he's, has to He has to have so it written down. Castle. Because I recall, that same, I recall that same statement from him. Yeah, man. Bro, like, he's a walking caption, bro. But yeah, he told me that on that first day, you treat the janitor the same way you treat the CEO everywhere you go, man. Um, and so I met this dude that he looked like he was just an IT guy, you know, like a short Mexican, you know, nerdy looking dude. And it turned out to be Shaboy. And I didn't know who Shaboy was. Like, he was just in a hallway. We were talking soccer. We got cool. We were laughing and all. Uh, turns out, like, you know, my boss was like, yo, you're not doing this event anymore. Instead, you're going to take the new morning show and show them around Brooklyn. And so that kind of, like, lit a light bulb in my head, man. I'm like, oh, damn. If I, maybe if I make a good enough impression, then, like, there might be sign for me, you know? Um, at the same time, bro, I was in the process of, of filling out my paperwork to join the Air Force. Not a lot of people know that, man. Mm. Yeah, man. Like, and so, like, I was so sick of, like, being broke and, like, and not being on the air and not feeling like I'm getting the opportunity that I wanted, um, that I felt like I deserved at the time. So my, my idea was to do radio in the military. I'm so glad it didn't work out that way. Um, and so I was supposed to sign my, my paperwork officially the following week from when I met Shaboy. Um, my, like, my family knew that I was going to the military. I knew in my head that I was going to the military. I was already like, all right, I'm going about to sign my paperwork. Next Tuesday, we out. That's it. It's a wrap, you know? Um, I want to say, like, a few days prior to me having to sign my paperwork to the military, um, my boss calls me in, like, yo, the morning show wants to talk to you. So I'm like, what's up? I talked to the morning show. 
and Shaboy and Nina, shouts to Nina, uh, they tell me like, yo, listen, like low key, you know, we're trying to expand our morning show, you know, into the streets and we need somebody that represents us uh, every single morning. And so there's like 43 of you guys, mind you, 43 like street teamers. Wow, for that's a st- huge bro, team. For one station, bro, 43 street teamers, man. And everybody had bachelor's degrees, all bro, kinds of degrees. I think, I think, I think when we were at Aggies, I think we had tops like 10, if that. I believe it, yo, we had a lot, man. It was an OD amount. And I remember like, you know, they just looked at me like, yo, we want you to be a part of the morning show. And so it'll be more hours, you'll be board up and overnight. Like basically just gave me a whole bunch of more titles, you know, for like less pay. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was already getting. Um, and so they asked me to be on the show with them and that's all I wanted, just an opportunity. So I took it, man. I remember I called my recruiter. I'm like, yo, I'm not going to sign up anymore, man. He's like, what happened? I'm pregnant. You know, like, and, and we just, you know. <laughs> I'm pregnant. That, man, you know? And so, <laughs> so that's how I got on, you know, Shaboy in the morning, man. Like, if it, yo, sh- being on Shaboy, saved me from going to the military not saying that would have been a bad thing but my journey would have been a hell of a lot totally different, different. you know it's now here that's for sure you know you you and i think and, and i'm bringing this up right because um i've heard i've heard a lot of people when they speak about you know radio now they say that the radio is not the same as it was before and a lot of it is because there isn't that um people to people um on the street right um, and I've always battled with that because, you know, I see, you know, I saw, I saw the stunts that you were doing out on the streets. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Whether it was you walking around with a diaper, you know, shirtless promos and shit. Like, you know, like, what, what brought you there? Like, what, what clicked in your head and was like, you know what, this is what I need to do to do this. Like, was there something that your boy was like, yo, listen, this is what you got to do. Or was like, no, like, I need to do something different to like stand out. That was exactly it. I needed to do something different to stand out completely. Cause like, if I kept, the, I knew that if I would do the same thing that everybody else was doing, I was gonna go nowhere, bro. Cause that, if everybody's doing the same exact thing, I am of no value at that point. So like, it's like I gotta step back and think about like, what am I good at? You know, que me da pena, que no me da pena. What can I do to like, like just separate myself from you know from from everybody else that's in my position, even that's higher in my position. And, it, and, and for me, it was just like, just be myself and just have fun, you know? Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Like, I wasn't doing anything illegal. <laughs> you know, like, I was doing anything like to get in trouble. Um, and so, uh, for what may have felt like something that, that would have been very uncomfortable for many people, such as like running through Times Square naked and shit like that, um, or like wearing a diaper in fucking February for Valentine's Day and going into offices, giving out pizza, little things like that, man. Like what the common denominator was that it always put smiles on people's faces and it made me look good at work too, in front of the higher ups, in front of the programming directors and it created conversations, you know, like there's once I made it on TMZ and the cover with my boy Dan, like, like the, the whole front cover of TMZ was me holding up a sign with the station logo on my chest saying we love you Lindsay because we went out we, we did a stunt to where like we had to find Lindsay Lohan uh in Brooklyn at her community service and so like uh I took it upon myself to try to propose to Lindsay Lohan at her community service and so that didn't work out but there was a lot of cameras out there and I made a whole scene Me quité la camisa. I was making a whole like yo Lindsay I love you and radio what up listen in <laughs> and so you know it was between the New York Daily Post that had posted that up Daily News TMZ was the big one. Um, just being myself, just having fun, bro. Like you, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta separate yourself from the masses. You gotta do what others are not willing to do to take yourself to the next level. You know. Now, um, I think you do something um, next that not a lot of people are willing to do. Um, you take a step that I think it's very life changing. Um, you take a step that sometimes is a difference maker between people making it or not. Yeah. Right. Um, you all of a sudden just moved to Miami. <laughs> yeah, it was all of a sudden. Right? Yeah. Um, how do you land on hits uh, 97 through Miami? Damn. And after that, let's not talk about the morning show yet because I have, a lot, I have a lot of more questions about this, right? You know, how hard was that decision or how easy was that decision to just move to Miami, drop, you know, Patterson when you grew up, you've been living here for years, you're a known DJ Life. here, and then... Boom, Miami. 
Yeah, I mean, bro, like Jersey, New York, like it's been my whole life, bro. You know, there's a kid up until that point, up until four years ago. Um, I got, I got, I got to lead up to that point though. Um, so you kind of like understand like what was like my mind frame um, in that, in that moment. Um, I remember like, yeah, I was working, I would start work at 3 a.m. I would run the boards overnight or babysit what was playing from 3 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. Morning show was until 10 a.m. at that point. Um, and so then I had to hit the streets for the, for, for the promotions department and what we got to do. Be back by like 3 o'clock, help out with producing the afternoon show, be done at 7 o'clock. So I'm working 3 a.m. to 7 p.m. every single day, putting in so many extra hours that I can't put in, that I can't clock in. But I was just there because, you know, like I'm just trying to hustle, you know. The hustle, the drive. I just want to be that next one, like, that they can choose. Like, all right, we're down a man. Who's up next? I'll pee, you know. I, want I to speak totally, to I totally understand you. So I was just waiting for my opportunity, man, and, and it just wasn't coming. And, um, and like, at that time, too, man, like, it, it was crazy because I had, like, I went through a bad breakup. I had gotten evicted from my home because, you know, like, I just couldn't afford my rent anymore. Um, I had, you know, I had got fired from TGI Fridays for the third and final time. That's a whole nother story right there. I got fired from the same Fridays three times, man. Ain't that some shit? They actually uh, hired you back. I think that's the bad part. I don't even think yeah. it's your fault. I don't even think it's your fault. <laughs> Whoever hired you again, that's their fault. Exactly, man. That's what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, man. And, and like, I was living in my car for, for a hot minute too, man, for a few weeks. And then my car broke down one day on the way to New York City, on the way to work on a Tuesday morning. It was snowing like crazy. I remember like one of my, like, like everybody has that. All right. So I, I was watching church, man, this past Sunday online. And so the pastor was talking about your sit, like ever since moment, right? So like people always remember your ever since moment, ever since this happened, ever since your breakup, ever since, you know, you made that move to Miami, ever since you got on the radio, ever since you started doing this podcast, like, you know, there's so many different, like you remember certain areas in your life, no matter what. And so this particular moment was an ever since moment for me. Like my car broke down and I remember that like, instead of being upset, bro, I just saw two different paths that just opened up in my mind. Am I gonna be upset and cry about this shit and do absolutely nothing about it, but just throw a little pity party for myself? Or what can I do to make this better? You know, like what, what am I gonna do to get out of this situation to make this better? So like, it was like the first time in my life where like, I felt like I could go like, I could go like two different directions with, you know, with how I can respond emotionally. Um, and so, I remember I started laughing, bro. And I told myself, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make this work. I packed, I went home, got my shit told. I went home, I got my duffel bag, filled it with my clothes. I, I got a little, my, my little book bag with my laptop. And I remember I, as soon as I'll be done at 7 p.m. at the radio station, I would walk about like two miles to Chinatown um, to Planet Fitness. I work out at the gym. I'll take a shower at the gym because that's the only place I can shower at. Buy a sandwich. Cut it up in three pieces, eat one piece for, for dinner, one piece for breakfast, one piece for lunch, pa que me dura, so it can last me, because you know New York City food is expensive, man. Yes. And now, like, I was living off the dollar slices heavy, too, for a minute. Yo, uh, 56, 56 and 7th? Exactly, bro. Yes! <laughs> um, and I remember, like, I'll be back at the station by 9.30. I'll work on my air checks till, like, 10.30. Go to sleep at 11 o'clock um, p.m. in the morning show office on the couch. Wake up at 2.30 in the morning, walk to the bathroom, wash my face, brush my teeth, walk into the studio at 3 a.m., do it all over again at 7 p.m. when I'm done. And I, and I lived at the radio station for, for close to two months. Um, and so people in the station started knowing that, like, oh, shit, like, this motherfucker's really living here. And, like, my PD found out. But then, like, like, I wasn't telling people that I was living at the radio station. But word went around the industry. And so one day, I get a random phone call from these girls, Lulu and Lala. Um, and they're like, yo, we see you hustling up in New York. We're short staffed at a station called His 97.3 in Miami. You try and get on, you know, like you'll be on weekends and you get to DJ on your own show on weekends. It was an opportunity that New York wasn't giving me that just wasn't available. And so they told me like, listen, like this opportunity is yours if you want it. But our boss, Joe Strata, who's still my boss, what's up, Joe? Um, she was like, listen, it's only, you're only going to get paid. Uh, you're only going to get paid $150 bi-weekly. $150 every two weeks. So, Jill said, the boss, Jill said, if you do not have family in Florida, don't take this job. 
Or if you don't have another income to fall back on or savings account, don't take this job. Do I have a fam- do I have family in Florida? Nope. Nope. Do I have a- another income? I'm broke nope. as hell in my own state, man. Like I'm living at the I'm- bro, my car broke down. I'm homeless to I'm living at the radio station at this moment, uh, this moment in time. Um, and I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> like, I don't know what, what made me save. I'm like, fuck it, let's do it. Like, we out to Miami then. I'll make it work. If I'm making it work right now with my current situation, I could definitely make it work in Miami. Hell yeah. Um, and it just worked out, man. Like, just that, that day was one of the greatest days of my life because I remember when I got that phone call. First of all, there was three incredible blessings that happened to me that, that one night, right? In a matter of like eight hours, six hours maybe. Number one, I got my dream job offer to be on the radio myself, to DJ on the radio. Fuck the money, bro. For me, it wasn't about the money. The money's gonna come eventually, man. Like for me, is I want to do something that makes me happy. That I feel like where I feel like I'm living in my purpose, and I feel like I'm able to make people feel good about themselves. The money will come eventually because I will get good at that. I, I just want to do something that makes me happy. That is my priority in life, right there. Um, so my first blessing was to get my dream job. The second blessing, I remember I called the only person I knew in Florida, my brother, my boy Yanni, who is like, I consider him my brother. Um, and so I told him about, yo, I got this job offer. And so this is, this is crazy how the universe works, man. Like when you do good, you get good. And like the universe likes to reward you like in very random times when you least expect it. I didn't know where the hell I was about to stay at, man. Like, I, I guess I was going to like try to pull the same thing and like maybe try to find like a Planet Fitness I could shower at in Miami and maybe find an office I could sneak sleep in. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. And so Yanni, without me even saying anything about my situation, he was like, bro, listen, you inspired me to move to Miami to become a zookeeper. Now he's a zookeeper in, in Zoo Miami down here, killing it out here. He was like, you inspired me to make the move down here. And you didn't know that, but you inspired me. And so I feel like I need to repay you that favor. You're welcome to stay in my place for a couple months rent free until you get yourself situated. So the fact that he, he offered me a roof over, over my head, man, for a couple months rent free was the biggest blessing ever, man. Oh my God, bro. The like, sense of relief. Yes. The oh, joyness. Bro. It's like, I got a two month window to figure it out, you know, to, to see where I'm going to go. And so like, that was just like, it, it was just a beautiful gift, man. And that was the second blessing out of the three. And then the third one, um, it was 3 a.m. and I was relieving the guy off duty, Abel Sanchez. Remember, I'm living at the station because my car broke down and like I can't go back and forth from Jersey, New York like that. Um, so Abel Sanchez, who's on the air overnight, he tells me, he's like, bro, why didn't you tell me about you living at the station? What happened to your car? I tell him. He says, me and my wife, we've been trying to donate our car for the longest. Do you want it? He looks at me in my eye and literally offers me his car for free, man. He gives me his car, bro. Me lo regalo, man. Like, who the fuck does that? Who gives away a car just, just for the hell of it? Like, nobody does that, man. Nobody does that. And so, like, you know, and that was, like, my biggest testimony in knowing, like, that's God looking out for me, bro. You know, like, that's, that's not no coincidence, man. Like, like, that's, I feel like I passed tests, like, life tests, and I was rewarded in that day. From all that, I was still broke as hell. At that moment, I was, like, negative two, three hundred in my bank account. But like, you know, I'm so glad I went through all of those struggles, man, because like it just taught me that there's so much more value in so many other things in life, you know? Like there there is a certain value in money, sure, you know, but it's not the most valuable thing in life. And and just being able to know that like I, I was able to just fight through and persevere, man, and just endure my battles and shit and just and overcome them and just become a better man out of it, out of it all. And the and, and I'll wrap that that story up with this last part. I asked every single person that helped me out along the way, why did you help me? And everybody, even if they didn't know each other, all told me the same shit, bro. You know what they said, man? You just were pay just good. Forward. Just pay it forward, man. You know? Like if you're in a position where you can help somebody, just pay it forward. And so that's I know it's a little bit long story, but like it's a lot. No, of no, it. but you, no. Listen to me, and you know, you know what it is. Like the real reason why I do this, right? Um, is because I like to hear um people's journeys because it's sometimes um motivating. Yeah. Um, to keep on going because you know sometimes when we go to struggles, we think that we're struggling by ourselves, right? Um, and you know from the story that you said, you know um you know I wasn't as drastic as yours, um but I did live a point in my life where I was living in my car. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, there, there, there was a point where, you know, I was sleeping on the floor of the, of multiple radio stations. So, so you can have an hint. 
um, you know. Um, and you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we think that we're just the only one and, and, and sometimes we think that, that the frustration of not getting the opportunity that you want and you knowing that you're working so hard and you're tired, yet you're waking up every day to go for that, for that goal yeah. and you keep on going, but it's not there yet, but you wake up the next day tired again, you know, and, you know, I think, you know, I think that's hustle, right? That the fact that you're working and 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 you're putting it a hundred percent, a thousand percent. And you know, the opportunity is still not coming, but you're still doing it because you know, you, you, you love that and you want to get that. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, we feel, we feel like it's just us, but in reality is, is, you know, there's a bunch of people that are going through it, yeah. you know? And, and I think, you know, the main purpose of this and, and I call, and I call it the tape, right? Because, and you'll see when I, when I edit the video, you know, you'll be on the B side of the tape, right? Because this is kind of like the B side of the tape where now everybody listens to, right? So when you had your cassette tapes, everybody always listened to the A side, A, yeah, right? But the B side, not, not a lot of people would hear the B side. That was the, the deeper side. side, you know? Right, because all the hits were on the A side. All the hits were mm -hmm. on the A side. So it was kind of like, you know, uh, uh, you know what? Just, to, you know, rewind it and put the A side again. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think this B side of people's story, it's really what, what allows us to be able to see the A side of you being on your morning show and yep. DJing and, you know, living your dream. Um, so, you know, talking about your dream, you know, um, you get to uh, Hits 92.3 um, and then all of a sudden I see um, that you're doing all these great interviews and then boom, uh, so, uh, so flow morning show. Yeah, man. Um, how does that happen? Uh, and, um, you know, and, and how is it? Because, right, you, you did a lot of overnight work, right? Yeah, uh -huh. um, and in the mornings you were on the street, but now you're in the booth, right? In the studio, you know, um, you know, how was that? And, um, and how is it working with people? Well, so, number one, I'm grateful for the, for the opportunity, man. You know, like it didn't have to be this way. And, and um, I'll be lying to you if I said that I didn't, like, if a few months ago, prior to like the um, so-called morning show being born, uh, I'll be lying to you if I said that I didn't think I was going to get fired or let go. <laughs> Straight up, man. I thought I was going to be out of a job, man, because with, with COVID hit, hitting, like, it affected, you know, the radio industry heavy, too. There's so many people across the country that got to let go. As far yeah, as I right know. here. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, like, exactly, man. And so, and I was the night guy. So when it came to full-timers, like, I was the first expendable person, you know, on, on the team when it came to, like, you know, full-timers. Um, and so... When quarantine happened, like, I remember, like, we were doing our shows um, from the crib, and so I was doing a show from the crib from right here, from this exact spot, for about six weeks, and then I, I started going back to the station, because we needed another another body, so they changed me to middays for, for about a, uh, a month and some change, um, and so apparently, like, just being on middays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., like, the right people heard me, and they liked my sound, and, and they heard the connection that I had with Kimmy B, so Kimmy B is the lead host of the Soap for Morning Show. Um, she, who doesn't like the fact that you're a Lakers fan? She hates it. Oh my I, god! I, I, just, I just wanted to put it out there because that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're always like this, but I, I love it. Yeah, I, she's a whole other story, man. I love her so much, man. I, like that's, that's family all day, right there. Um, but yeah, man. Um, where was I going with it? Oh my god, there's so many different angles. Um, you were about to get fired. Then you did. Oh yeah, I was about then to you got switched the afternoons. They heard you. They liked you. Yeah, man. And, and so, like, I got a phone call from my boss while I was in the middle of a show, and I'm thinking it was the call. Like, damn. The goodbye call. Like, that we're yeah. not having our pee anymore. Call. Yeah, man. <laughs> and so I was just preparing myself. I remember I took a deep breath. <laughs> what's up, Jill? And she was like, hey, what's up? Super, like, high up beat. I'm like, okay, cool. So far, so good. And then she tells me, hey, listen, we're about to switch things up. We're going to shake shit up. So um, we're going to start a new morning show, and it's going to be with you, Kimmy, and Kelvin. And I'm like, Huh? What? I'm like, yo, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, for so I'm not gonna let go. She like, let go. Like, the fuck you talking about? And I'm like, never mind. And um, and yeah, man. And so like, it was honestly born. I want to say out of nowhere, but like, it's just all part of the plan, man. You know, it was it, it was just a it was just a matter of fate for me to be here in this exact moment. Um, and so working with um the coworkers that I have, man. Like first and foremost, you know, my fellow co-host Kimmy and and Kelvin. There's a lot of morning shows that don't get along, you know? And, like, I, I think, like, maybe you being in radio, you might have heard stories of, like... Oh, for sure. Hands down. 
don't fuck with each other, man. They don't like each other. And, you know, they'll they're fight. Co-workers. All the time. Yeah, they're That's just it. co-workers, you know. They'll fight all the all this time off the air and then fake the funk on the air. Nah, man, like, you know, when it comes to, like, our show, like, we're legit a family, man. Like, me, Kimmy, and Kelvin, like, we are such a tight, we have such a tight bond. Um, Kelvin is my brother. Kimmy is my sister. Like, especially when it comes to Kimmy, too, man, like, like she's looked me out so many different times, just, just in my personal life. Like, she, like, I would take a bullet for her, bro, straight up. That's how strongly I feel about her. Like, she's an incredible human being. Like, all she wants to do is help people. She's crazy as fuck. Like, let me get that. Like, <laughs> like she is insane, bro. It does look. But she has the biggest heart that you could ever imagine, man. And um, and she's taught me so much with all of her experience and, like, and just her leading our show and just allowing me and Kelvin to flourish in our roles. Um, you know, we, we've, been, we've been kicking ass, man, straight up. We've been killing it. Um, and so we got some really good news as far as the ratings that I can't discuss right now. But it was really good news. <laughs> hey, listen, as long as they're good news, that's a good thing. It's right? great right? news, man. So yeah. now, you know, I'm not, not to summarize everything up, but, you know, I think a lot of the struggles um, that you went through, right, kind of put a lot of um, stress on your body, um, mental stress, emotional yeah. stress, right? And I'm asking, and I'm saying all this because, you know, is there another DJ that hit? So because five, you do seven, yeah. nine, twelve, five. Like, mi hermano, cuántas horas son? And it's funny because I don't think, like, I don't think there's another DJ um, on the radio that does two mixes a day <laughs> in the country, to be honest with you. Like, bro, like, how I, many I hours are you putting I'm, in? Like, you know what I mean? And, and like, you know, are, like, are you ever tired? Like, like. Oh, yeah, I'll be like, tired, man. Is, is it, what's it called that? Um, The, the five-hour energy drink? Like, what are you on? What are you, what's so, the secret? I haven't drank coffee in like two years. I don't drink coffee. Yeah, I don't do drink. I don't drink coffee either. All I drink is water, man. To be honest with you, I, I barely drink alcohol. Like maybe like cervezas. Uh, I can't. I can't agree on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like cervezas every now and then, you know. But like for the most part, all I drink is just straight water, a gallon a day, um, and just trying to eat better and you yeah, know. But of course, I get tired as hell, bro. Um, a lot of times I have to stay. At, I have to stay at the station, and you know, it just allows me to be more productive um, in between time. I'll be there at 5 a.m. I get there like at 5:15, um, and then I will be out by like 6:30 p.m., 7 p.m. Some long ass days every day. But we finally just hired another DJ because like there's been like a lot of stuff, you know. Um, nah, I, I saw the opening. Trust me, I saw the opening. Yeah. And so um, I trained him last week, my my boy DJ Antonio Fresco. And so his first day mixing was this past Monday, and um, and so I was there to support him on Monday for his first show. Um, and so now I have just three mixes. Granted, three mixes is still a lot. <laughs> so seven, nine, and twelve. Um, but now, like, I feel like there's there's more more of a flexibility amongst DJs at, at our station. Um, and yeah, man. So like, like one, I'm grateful for all the opportunities and the trust that the station has put into me for like for handling basically almost all the mixes, you know. Uh, but two, it's nice to like finally get like a, a certain load off my shoulders and being able to just you know enjoy my time a little bit and, and be more productive too and other things that I want to accomplish on top of radio. Bueno, mi gente, um, this is uh, DJ Al P. Um, and um, I don't even, like... Yo. My brother, I want to tell you, before you continue, man, this was a phenomenal interview, bro. Like, for real. Like, thank straight you, up. Bro, thank like, you. like, you're naturally very good at, at creating that conversation, man. Thank it's, you, thank you. And I've been watching you, man, like, you know, like... We like we met a while ago. We met many years ago, bro. Like at the parties and the clubs, our, our paths crossed a lot amongst mutual friends and mutual events and whatnot. Um, and it's really like for me, I think it's so beautiful to see good people grow, you know. And so, fuck what anybody else got to think, man. You know, keep on doing you. I'm so proud of you, and and yo, you're only developing yourself into becoming something even greater, my brother. So keep on striving. Don't limit yourself. Don't hold yourself back, bro. Because real shit, either you got it or you don't, man. And my brother, I, I do believe that you got it, bro. Whether it's in English or Spanish, and I mean that, man, for real. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, you know, um, I'm, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I definitely, um, um, you, you, you know that point where you, uh, where you're putting in all that work, and you know that that chance is not coming yet. Right. Um, I think I think I've uh, I've been playing with that a lot mm. um, and I've tried to keep my head in a very healthy mindset to keep on going. 
Mm. Right. And I'm this, and, you know, projects like this is what really kind of like keeps me inspired to just keep on creating new content and, um, yeah. and having the ability to have these conversations with people, because I think this is what really, um, drives me and what really gives me the energy to like kind of wake up every day um, yeah. and to get people like you, uh, to acknowledge that, you know, my work is uh, you know, respectable and, and good, you know, it means a lot. Yeah. So, hell yeah. Um, pero, yeah. um, mi gente, um, this is Alos Curvo Negro's party, um, DJ LP, um, yeah. and no se olviden eh, suscribirse a JRTV as our new YouTube channel where we're going to have everything posted and whatnot. Thank well, you for joining. Yeah.